sometimes I feel the void, but sometimes I realize I think something's causing the void. Not just air pressure, it's like uh, something pulling the air pressure. Um, there's cosmic background radiation. This is explainable. Permeating everywhere. Like 2.7 degrees Kelvin or something. It's just there. It's present. Radiation. Electromagnetic essence. And they've got like issues. They think, okay, how can it be the same temperature over here when it's that about that same temperature over here when these two areas of the universe look like they haven't ever connected before? It would take like light light years for the light to travel between one spot to the next from our eyes, but it's appearing there. The Big Bang didn't actually move out. It started to appear in new places. It's constantly appearing in a new place, and it's all connected to the source which is appearing it. So, of course, the temperature over here is similar or the same as the temperature over here. Because it's all coming from the same source that's inductively being fed. The cosmic background radiation is penetrating us and passing through everything. And we have the ability to create a frame-dragging effect around us, which is essentially uh, an electromagnetic shield shielding. They do it in laboratories when you pass electricity through a large spinning object, or I guess a small spinning object, that you move fast enough. You can create the illusion of, you know, speed. You create a, a circular, spherical bending of space-time reality. Like an electromagnetic, literally. And when something comes at it, this, this spherical eminence, its tendency is to pass around it rather than penetrate and pass through, although I believe if you approach it directly and put pressure on it, you can pass through it, or maybe you can't. It just depends on the power of the shielding and the power of your force. And we do that with our thoughts. When we close off from people around us, we're putting up a shield, and their energy is passing around us unless they focus in on us and they can penetrate the shielding. And it's the same thing with the cosmic background, microwave back, CMBR, cosmic mi microwave background radiation. Um, it, it's, we can shield ourselves from it, and th that is the collective consciousness. That's the essence that, that, we, that everyone feels that is felt, that you can describe as a web or a path or a, a feeling. But it's, it's the, I've described as a web, but it's more of a radiant essence, experience. We can shield from it and cut ourselves off from that feeling, and a lot of people live life cut off from that. They're so, they're so focused on eating and getting money and perpetuating that they, they, don't, they have shields up to the feeling of this electricity is passing through them. And I think those are people that eventually want to commit suicide because they are so detached from that feeling, that radiance, that they do something extreme to feel it, rather than lower their shield gradually and allow it to pass through them as they're living and as they're acting, and know it, feel it, feed it, let it feed you. It's symbiotic. It's what keeps us animated. So if you're cut off from it, you'll slowly degenerate, uh, deassemble, you'll, you'll diffuse, your energy will slowly dissipate. And that's okay, that's good, especially if you're overcharged. It's good to draw away from society for a time and be alone and focus into something or into the ground or however. But then it's necessary, too, to recharge and to charge and to link into the cosmic background, microwave background radiation, link into the consciousness, to the feeling, to the essence. Be part of it. And it will charge you and bring you vibrance. And then, you, you, like a battery, your body then starts to emanate heat because it's charged, of course. We're charged battery-like substances. We can take that radiation and feed it to those around us, pass it into them, literally. Dude, the wheels spin, man. Sometimes a thought is so accelerant that I hear cars just peeling off in the distance. 
Like that driver was like, yes, in that moment, hit the gas. And that's how we heal people with our presence, by taking the charge that we've accumulated and passing it to another. And then taking more charge. I believe we can communicate with the sun. Although we can't look at it. And that's how people associate communication. A lot of it is visual. but So it's, it's a way of learning how to focus without eyesight. And focus into the sun. Communicate. Give the sun and it will give you. Communicate. Simple thoughts to it. Tell it you love it. Tell it whatever you want to tell it. But focus energy into the sun and it will reciprocate. And you can use that to heal. Yeah, choose the sun because I think that the stars are focal points of radiation, that it's massing and everywhere, and that it, it uh, culminates in, in these magnetic spheres of star that we know as stars, meeting grounds of elements, pressurizations, focal points that like come in and explode out as a star. And so the sun is our nearest focal point. But then it becomes like the earth is a focal point also of cosmic microwave background radiation. And our bodies are focal points. The sun is just so large. So relatively it's a giant focal point near us. But our bodies are, are like stars. I went to the sun, man. And the moon carries a lot of it. The sun will heal you. Cool thought. I gotta get more elemental information. I know after the Big Bang there was hydrogen, helium, and lithium. One, two, and three. And that, that when they started to come together and pressurize in star clusters and stars, it started to form heavier elements because of the pressure. Because of the focus. Fun, fun, man. The observatory has got a great elemental exhibit, but it's not big. It's just got all the elements. It's really cool. It shows like, what elements exist in stars and what elements exist in human bodies, and they're very similar. <laughs> really, dude, it's really cool. Okay, it's enough. See ya.